This is Excel 2016, Module 5, Part 9. We're continuing with working our with our first pivot table. We're going to look into filtering it using the slicer and refreshing it. So let's go back into our June workbook. You should be on the pivot one pivot table worksheet that we created in the last segment. So we're going to be working with the filters in this particular segment. So the first thing we're going to look at is what if I don't want to see a subtotal by sales ID but what I really would like to be able to do is look at filtering by the various sales ID. So I'm going to drag this sales ID field up into the filters box. You'll notice when I did that, it removes all of those subtotals. And up here at the top, I get a new drop down option. So if I come up here and click on this drop down arrow, similar to the filter arrows in Excel tables, I can click on an option such as one, and it will display all of those items for sales ID one. And you can do that for each individual one that you wanted to look at. Now one thing that is different from the filter arrows is if I want to look at more than one, I have to check this box down here that says select multiple items. When I do that, then I get the checkboxes. So if I wanted to see two and five, I have to check this box first, then I can check multiple checkboxes above. Notice when I do that, all it says is multiple items. It doesn't tell me which items which is one thing that a lot of people did not like. Okay, so we're going to go back and we're going to change this to just be two. When you only have one sales ID selected, it does show you which one you have selected. And then if I wanted to further restrict by the other options, for example, if I wanted to restrict by the column values, I could come in here and under column labels and say I do not want to look at residential care. And it would remove that column. It's not gone, it's just hidden or filtered. You also have the ability to filter based on the dates using the rows. Notice if you are filtering, it gives you a visual to show you that you are filtering. I'm going to go ahead and select all. and select all. And now we're going to look at working with the slicer. So if I go up here to the ribbon, you'll notice there are two tabs. I want to look at the one that says Analyze. And under the Analyze, you're going to see an Insert a Slicer. Now I can insert slicers 
for multiple fields. You don't, you're not restricted to just one. So let's say I decided I wanted both sales ID and business segment. Notice now it created two slicers. So I'm going to put them both over here. The right of the data. I'm going to set them both up in a similar fashion. Remember what we talked about with slicers when we dealt with Excel tables? We can set options for styles. I'm going to choose the dark green one. We can change the number of column of buttons, the height and width of each button. We're going to set the height of 1.9 of the entire slicer, which is that entire area. And we're going to set 1.25. And there we have the first button. I'm going to do the same thing with the business. We're going to go and set it to be the dark green and change the size to 1.9 and 1.25. Oh, let's make this one a little wider. So let's try 1.5. And now the entire label is visible. Okay, so basically with editing those slicers, you're dealing with the same way of editing them that you saw when we dealt with slicers with the Excel table. Now to filter with the slicer, it's going to work the same way again. If I wanted to see sales ID 2, when I click on that, Sales ID 2 is visible. Notice, because it says I have this up here as a filter, it's going to display it in both places. If I decided I didn't only wanted to see individual, it would show me that. Notice it does the visual indicators of the filters over here the same way it did if you used the filter arrow itself. Now let's say I want to do multiple. So let's say I wanted to do two and five. So I'm going to hold the control key down. Notice it still says multiple items up here, but my slicer shows me which item. If I wanted to pick individual and residential, again, the slicer will show me which options are there. Notice when I'm clicked on the slicer or anywhere else except on the pivot table, my pivot table is not active. So therefore, the pane is not visible. If I, am however, click on the pivot table, it will show up. Now, if you were doing a presentation and you did not want this to show up, you could come over here and uncheck that box, and it will not display that task pane. The last thing we want to look at with this is if the data changes. So we're going to go ahead and clear the filters so everything is being displayed. And we're going to look at the date of 6-3 and we're going to focus down on individuals. Okay, so 6-3 the individual currently says 182.55. 
I'm going to go over to my table, which is the source of the data, and I'm going to find the record for 6-3 for individual. To make it easier, I'm just going to filter and say only show me individuals. Then I can locate 6-3. And I am going to change that because it should have been 180.55. So when I make that change, you would have expected Excel to update the pivot table if it worked like all of the other Excel features. But notice it did not. Pivot tables are the one feature that when the underlying data changes, they are not automatically refreshed. What you have to do is you have to come in here to analyze and you have to click this refresh button. When you refresh, it goes out to the source, looks for the changes to the data, and updates them. So that is one thing that is different that you want to pay attention to. So you do have to refresh if you think your data may have been changed. In the next segment, we will be looking at another pivot table. We'll look at creating one from the recommended pivot tables option. And then we will also be looking at pivot charts.